Hi there, and uh, welcome to the very first episode. So, look, I'm really excited about doing this. We have lots of questions to answer. I'm happy to say that when we put the word out, you know, that I was doing this show, we were inundated with questions. There's lots of questions to be answered out there. So um, let's get cracking, shall we? And let's go on with the first question. Hi, I'm Saran. I'm 16 years old and I'm from Newcastle. My goal is to be a professional actress. My question to you is, if you could go back and tell your 16-year-old self anything, knowing what you know now about the industry, what would it be and why? Right, that's a great question, Saran. Um, what would I tell my 16-year-old self? Where to begin with this question? Um, I think I'd sit myself down and I'd say, look, Brian, it's important that you get very clear about what you want to do with your life. Um, I know at 16, you might not always know what you want to do with your life. Um, but I think if you have a definite inclination, um, often with people that want to become actors, they, they know that they want to become an actor. But for one reason or another, maybe they don't follow through with it. Um, I think often the reason for that is that it can be that everybody's got an opinion, especially when you're 16 years old, right? I mean, your parents, your friends and family, teachers at school, they all have an opinion about what you should do with your life, you know, where your skills lie. Um, but what I would say to my 16 year old self is, look, what is it that you really want? It doesn't matter what anybody else wants because it's your life at the end of the day and you're not here forever. I know you're 16, you think you're going to live forever. Um, but the fact is it'll come to an end one day and really what you want to look back and think is, did I do everything that I wanted to do? Was it really what I wanted to do with my life? So I get very clear with my 16 year old self on that particular matter. Um, what else would I say to my um, 16 year old self? I'd say, you know what, go out there and take action and don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to take risks. And if things go wrong and they don't particularly work out and one particular action that you take, don't worry about it. You know, make mistakes, learn from the mistakes. I'll tell you why this is important. Um, forget about trying to be a perfectionist, right? Think about taking action. And when you take the action, there's gonna be things that go wrong and mistakes that happen. And then you've got to learn from those mistakes. Um, from doing that, you progress. You know, I kind of think that in today's society where there's this whole thing about you've got to be perfect, you know, it's, it's held as a badge of honor to be a perfectionist, which I can understand, right? Because nobody wants to make mistakes. Everyone wants to get it right. However, that's not how you move forward. And I think that anybody that's achieved anything in life knows that. They know that they're going to make mistakes. So don't be afraid to do it. However, uh, I know how difficult that is to begin with because you're not really taught that, right? From a very young age, we're kind of taught, you know, look, be careful, you know, be careful out there, right? Don't take risks. However, that's not the way that you achieve something. So, um, so don't worry about it, relax about it, take massive action, go out there and try things out and learn from the mistakes. Um, from an acting perspective within the acting industry, this is what I would say um, to my 16 year old self. I'd say, look, make sure you get great tuition because at the end of the day, you know, what you produce as an actor is, uh, is your product or service that you're offering to the acting industry. It's important that that's really great. So find somebody that's really cool, that really knows their stuff and can really teach you well because like, it's like any job, right? If you're gonna go and learn to be an accountant or a plumber, you've got to learn that job. Same with acting, despite what other people might tell you. If you wanna be a really great actor, they all started with learning the craft of acting and that's, that's really, really important. Um, I'd also say to my 16 year old self, look, be persistent, don't give up. Um, you know, often in life, we, the things that we want most and the, the things that are worth achieving do not happen overnight. Um, sometimes you have to go through a series of rejections or things that go wrong. Do not give up at the, that, that point. You're being tested, right? And the test is if you can overcome those things and keep going and keep going, then you will get there in the end. So um, that's what I'd say to myself there. So I think that covers some major points about what I would tell myself um, at 16 years old. So let's go to the next question. How do you deal with another actor who continually tries to direct you in a scene while you're working together? Paul Kelleher. Right, so um, a great question there um, because you know it can often be the case that we are working with very different personalities um, within the acting industry. And, um, and Paul, I know Paul, so it's a good question, Paul. Um, and I know your personality, right? So the thing is that um, 
Paul, I know what you're like. You, you know, you're a no-nonsense type of guy. You want to work with cool people that are just like you. But the reality is, um, there's going to be all kinds of different people we work with. Some are easy to work with, and unfortunately, you're going to get some people that are not so easy to work with. And I sympathize, man, because you know what you're talking about here? A, another actor that's trying to direct you. It's not their job to direct you. It's like they're an actor just like you. Their job is to explore, to come up with options, come up with choices, different ways of playing the scene. But it's definitely not about directing you in the scene. Um, often when people do that, if an actor does this, it's really all about control. They're uncomfortable with the idea that something's going to happen that they are not in control of, and so they're trying to control the situation. Um, now, it's a fine line because there are some occasions where maybe an actor will make a suggestion to you because it's a technical requirement. You know, maybe you have to move in a little bit closer into a shot or move a little bit closer out of shot because it helps them in what they're going to do um, physically within a physical action, for example. That's different, right? Because that is about helping the scene work. Um, however, if it's a case of somebody, an actor's basically coming in and going, oh, no, I don't think you should do that. I mean, that's happened to me. I've had, you know, I've had actors basically tell me, your character wouldn't do that. And I say, really? I said, how do you know that? How do you know that character wouldn't do that? Um, is it written in the script? And invariably, it's not. So again, it goes back to the sense of that person wants control over you. Um, don't give it to them, right? Really don't give it. It's not, you know, that can kill um, the work off because it means it becomes very predictable. It has very safe, you know, sort of boundaries for that person, which means the experimentation of finding new things and different ways of playing it get killed off. Um, ultimately, it's the director's job to do it. Now, I know you know all this, Paul. Um, however, I'm explaining for, for everybody, that's, just, that's the situation, right? Let's, let's get real. Um, but how do you deal with somebody like that at the end of the day? How, what do you say to them if they start doing something like this? So basically what I would say is, I'd say, look, you know, um, you know, those are some interesting suggestions, but why don't we leave it to the director to choose? Why don't we come up with many different ways of playing it and try different things out? Invariably, then we give options for the director. And, and I would keep doing that, basically, until the person got the message that you didn't want to be directed and, um, and keeping it free and fluid. You know, keep mentioning those kind of things, you know, that you want to keep things free, fluid, spontaneous and that you don't want to kind of get it hemmed into doing it a particular way yet. And ultimately, keep reminding them, it's the director's job to direct, not yours, you're the actor. So um, I think that kind of sums that question up, Paul. Let's go to the next one, shall we? Should I send a showreel of 3 minutes 30 seconds or a scene of 40 seconds with me playing a similar role? My agent usually sends in the whole showreel. Andrei Satilov. Okay, so a good business of acting question here um, to do with showreels and what you should send in. It's a good, a really good point. This is what I would uh, say I recommend. I think your agent's doing the right thing is the long and short to begin with. I think the whole reel needs to go in because you don't know. Yeah, they're looking for a specific role now, um, but you would prefer that cast and director to see um, everything that you've got potentially on that reel. Um, and it gives them that chance. However... I would also say that you should put something in specific. So for example, nowadays often uh, self-taping is all the rage as we know. Um, you might be asked to send something in that is um, a part of the, a scene, for example, from the actual script. Um, but you, of course you can do that yourself. If you think you can improvise, for example, a particular kind of character or a similar kind of character and you want to send that in too, then why not? Um, probably your agent will have no objection to that. So initially, you're going to send in the whole thing, give them the option to look at um, all your work. Um, I think you're right from the point of view, because you said in your question about, should I send a 40 second scene in? Um, that's quite astute of you, because I've heard from a lot of casting directors, both sides of the pond, if you like, that sometimes they only watch as much as 30 seconds. So I think whatever you've got at the front of that show reel needs to be your best material. Um, and then, you know, after you've sent the whole thing in, maybe you send in something very specific. Um, I think, I always think that's a great idea because the closer that you can get to that role, the better. And the less imagination that MD needs to use, be it a casting director or an agent, uh, sorry, a casting director or a director needs to use, the better. 
So um, why don't you do both? If you think there's something really appropriate, you can knock something out quite quickly, a short scene, go for it. So look, I think that really brings us to the end of the first show. Well, can you believe it? We've done the first Ask Brian T show. Um, look, there's lots of questions that have been sent and we're going to get through them all in the coming weeks. So, um, so keep sending them in. Um, if you want to send in a question, then you can do that um, via social media is the best way. Um, you can do it by uh, going to our Facebook page. You can go on there, post a question. Um, you can do it by uh, going to my uh, Twitter, um, which is Brian C. Timoney. You can go there, post a question, or you can even Snapchat me. I know, it's crazy. My age and Snapchat. Um, my prediction is everybody will be on it eventually, so uh, why not start now? Send me a question uh, on Snapchat, that's fine. Or you can send us even better. Why don't you send us in a video of you asking the question? And um, that's my favorite, really, because um, then we can actually see you. And send it in to me, and we'll make sure it gets played on the show. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the first show. I look forward to speaking to you on the next one.